Love and greetings to you. Welcome to the Marriage Foundation YouTube channel. This is where we, I, I don't want to be cliche, but not only do we tell it like it is, but my background is very different from what you'll find out there. I was a divorce mediator until about 22, 23 years ago, and I had a major, uh, how shall I say, a, not just an epiphany, but an educational awareness about marriage. When a couple that I was working with to get a divorce asked me to help them save their marriage instead. And I used to be a, a believer in divorce. I learned so much when I started diving deeply into what marriage is all about and how education, proper education is so important for us when we're growing up. It's too late for us it, for many of us who have gone through life and, and not had that education, and no one does. I'm kind of the Galileo of marriage, you might say, because the discoveries I've made do not come from the Puritan, the established, the traditional. I looked at it freshly. And so this question that has come up is one that I no longer struggle with. The question is, and it's a wife who asks, a wife asks, should I leave my marriage after infidelity? And she's not talking about her own, obviously. She is talking about her husband's infidelity. And so rather than just say yes or no, and I'm gonna give a spoiler alert, the answer is no. I'm going to explain this in enough depth so that you don't need me to convince you, but the facts will convince you. The potential will convince you. The reality that you're dealing with will convince you. So let's talk first about the fact that neither you nor your husband received a proper education for being married. We just don't. The truth of the matter is that where we learned about marriage is from TVs, the sitcoms that we watch. Really, don't laugh at that. We learn sarcasm. That's not even a good thing in a marriage, and yet almost universally, it's part of what's portrayed as a happy marriage. We learn from movies. We learn from articles here and there, or pop psychologists on the radio, or on television. But we don't learn about marriage for what marriage is. So let's begin with that. Let's talk about really what is marriage anyway? Because if you look it up, and I have, I found that the definition is like paper thin. It really doesn't describe that you fell in love with the man you have to call your soulmate, who you wanted to dedicate your entire life to living with, and why? Because, and this is unbelievable that no one ever guesses this, ever knows the answer to this of why you get married other than you fell in love. And the answer is embarrassingly simple. You wanted to be happy. Not only that, you wanted to be happier every single day. Well, that totally stands in stark contrast to everything else that we seek that brings us happiness. A new car, I get a new car and I'm happy with it, but it's not an ever increasing happiness. Okay, maybe for the first few months as I'm discovering it, and then it's just my car. That kind of thinking is not appropriate for marriage because what is going to deliver happiness in our marriage? Love, love. 
And what, how do you define love? The current thinking around love is that it's an emotion. Strong feelings of satisfaction, gratification. Look it up. You'll see it's so shallow. Emotions, I discovered, are not even part of love. It's part of the mind. And I know that's a little esoteric. Don't worry about it. Let me illustrate it this way. When you feel real love, where do you feel it? You feel it in your heart. It's overwhelming. Your body just vibrates with love. Your mind cannot even handle the love that you're feeling. It's like when you go to a wedding and there's that moment of love, it hits everybody. And right away, your mind starts thinking about other things. There's this battle going on between you, and this is not religious, between you, the soul, and your mind, which is a possession. So you see, not only do we not learn about what marriage is, we don't even know about ourselves. The big discussion among people, you might say, who, who venture into this category, it's as dangerous as talking about politics, the consensus is, among most of us, we have a soul. But that's not accurate. And this is not just semantics. What is accurate is that you are a soul. That's accurate, isn't it? Think about it. You have a body, you have a mind. When you say, I am, you're talking about sort of the conglomeration of you, the soul, with a mind, with a body, this is who I am. You look in the mirror and you go, this is who I am. You hear a recording of yourself, yes, that's who I am. You hear the philosophies, yes, that's what I relate to. But that's the little I in real world, not our Freudian world, the little I is the ego. It is this conglomeration. But the big I is I am a child of God. I was created by God individually. I am loved as much as every saint he's ever created, as every sinner he's ever created. This is not religious. I'm not selling you any religion. This is just the reality. And when we fall in love, we don't fall in love with the ego. We appreciate the character traits of the person we fell in love with, but we also, there's a lot of their traits we don't like. But it's the souls connecting. There is a bridge there. It's undeniable. And the love that you seek universally is the one that you sought in marriage. So you seek love in marriage in order to be happy. And because love by definition, real definition, is a spiritual thing, it means it has no limitation, it's infinite. And we can learn to love more and more on a constant basis because it's ever expanding. It has no limitation, but we're not taught that. And you got into marriage for those things, right? You did, that's why you got married. And now what happened is you discover your husband is betraying you. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. He betrayed you. Now, there is something you can do. But first, let's talk a little bit more about the practical side. The practical side is that we have a lifespan of so many years. Most of those years before we got married were dedicated to getting educated. And then we may have worked in the workplace for a while. And then we found our soulmate who we married. So we have this progression of our lives that leads up to our finding our soulmate. And then we date them, court and marry. It's a huge investment of our limited time in this world. 
We have kids probably, not just an investment, but we've taken on a responsibility. So that's sort of the practical side. But what do I do here? He betrayed me. I didn't know he was capable of infidelity. That's where we are now. So without making excuses for your husband, we wanted to love him as much as be loved by him. We wanted to open our hearts to give ourselves entirely. He's the one. Did you? No, you didn't. How do I know that? Because many who come to us to take our course declare, I was the best wife ever. But by what measurement? By what measurement? Because there's only one measurement that really counts for a man. And that's the measurement of opening your heart of cultivating your devotion, not just the expression of it, but actually inwardly cultivating love, building upon the layers and layers of this untouchable, unhearable love that fills your life. You didn't do it. It's not your fault. You didn't know. Your husband is probably unfaithful because of a lack of sex. Not all the time. I've worked with women who had sex literally two, three, four times a day and their husbands were still looking. Because it's not just about sex. It's about opening the heart. The outer stuff is important too. You can't expect your husband, because men have a very thin ego. They don't like to be criticized. They don't like to be condemned. They don't like to be controlled. They don't like all of these negative things. They don't like to be nagged. And you're going, well, but this is real life. No, it's not. No, it's not. And so your husband sought his love elsewhere. And there's plenty of women out there who don't mind being home wreckers. What they say is, well, she didn't take care of him, so I can. I will. He's a great guy. I want him. Or maybe he didn't go that far. Maybe he's not in an affair. He's just sexting or dating hookers. Who knows? The point is, if he had at home what you promised him, and I'm not blaming you, don't misunderstand this, I'm merely laying it out. If he had at home what he thought he was getting into, even though nobody talks about it, it's like a subconscious thing, he wouldn't be looking elsewhere. There's no way he would cheat on you. No way. So, the question, should I leave my marriage after infidelity? No. What should you do then? You should step back and you should ask yourself, was I a perfect wife? You don't have to be perfect, but was I a great wife? It's not that hard to be a great and perfect wife, you know. Are there things that I can correct in myself? Do I want to save my marriage? Forget the infidelity. Do I want to be with him? Do I still love him? And if you do, then see what took place. And I tell this to everyone. Our counselors tell this to people because it works. It's a wake-up call. It is a moment of education that, whoa, I am not getting the benefits from my marriage either. 
It's not just him who's running off because he wasn't feeling great. I'm not feeling great either. He doesn't treat me like a queen. Right. Neither of you knew. So now you, because you've come to this video, you have the opportunity to see things differently. And I'm here to tell you that most, the vast majority of the people who take our courses are women. The vast majority of those women are facing what you're facing. The vast majority of women, way over 90%, don't just save their marriage. They turn it into the marriage that anyone would die for. Because when you know what you're doing, it delivers marriage as one of the greatest gifts of God. It, it gives us this, I call it the sacred space of marriage. I call marriage a spiritual path that two individual souls to get, take together. I say, and I know, and all of the people who take our women's course know this was a blessing in disguise. And there's nothing else out there like ours. Nothing that compares at all. You know, it's, it's so radically different. Our approach to marriage is so radically different from everyone else's, but ours is real. I'm sorry if that sounds arrogant. I frankly don't care how it sounds. The point is that when you take the course for women, you get the result that is so off the charts, you never imagined it possible. Take a look at our reviews, because that's reality. If you don't, it's okay, but we're here to serve you. The counselors who respond to your questions, it's a free service. You just go to our website, you ask a question, they're volunteers. It's not like I'm this great thinker. I fell into this. I, I have a deep faith in God. You don't have to. I don't care. This is like math. I feel that God set this whole thing up. And that's been the experience of many who come to us. I'm not a saint. I'm not a prophet. I'm an idiot. I am in many ways. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. But I got this. I got this. And you can have this too. Because what we do in the course for women is we show you how to get out of this hole you dug, how to revamp your marriage, and then move forward in the, in the light, literally, towards greater and greater light. It's so cool. And that's the answer to the question. And I hope you are a subscriber. If not, subscribe to this channel so you learn this stuff. Come visit us again and again. Go to our website and get the 10 do's and don'ts so you could become uh, on our emailing list. We don't send you, we, this is a nonprofit. I'm not trying to sell you anything, but we want you to know. You know, it's like when you discover a great restaurant, right? You want to tell everybody. And if you're like me, when you walk into a restaurant that sucks, you don't tell anybody. You just eat it, no pun intended, and you go on. But when you find something great, you tell everybody. I found something great, and I want to tell everybody. You're part of everybody. You're a good human being. You're a good woman. You're a good wife. But learn how to get the marriage that you deserve. I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation, here to serve you. God bless you. Take care. Thank you.